different 
seven, she and her sister were packed off to a small school run by a relative, Mrs. Corley, a forbidding, stiff and formal personality. But the school was not a success, possibly because of Mrs. Corley, and in due course moved from Oxford to Southampton. Here, very soon after arriving, both girls fell victim to putrid fever, and had it not been for Jane's hasty dispatch home, she might well have died. Hampshire Social Circles Her stay at home, however, was short, for in 1784, she and Cassandra were sent to Mrs. Lurton Hill's Abbey School at Reading. Here Jane spent two pleasant years, having acquired the rudiments of a young lady's education. She and Cassandra returned to Steventon in 1785. They helped their mother make preserves, syrups, homemade wine and beer, and in the afternoons received instruction from their father. In later life, Jane Austen was misleadingly modest about her education, declaring, I think I can boast myself with all possible vanity, the most unlearned and uninformed being that ever dared to be an authoress. In fact, she received a thorough grounding in English language and literature, read fluently in French, and had, in an addition, a passing acquaintance with Italian. When the daily duties were done, with the family was spent playing charades round the candle-lit table, and then, while the girls and Mrs. Austin sewed, donned, or embroidered, George, James, or Henry Austin would read aloud from their favourite authors, Shakespeare, Dr. Johnson, Addison, and Steele, and the contemporary poet, William Cowper. Sometimes they would read a play with each member of the family Occasionally, especially at Christmas, plays would be performed. As Jane grew into her teens, her closest companion and confidant remained Cassandra. They shared the same interests, enthusiasms and sense of humour, and when household duties permitted, they walked together in the nearby woods or through the pretty Hampshire countryside. The sort of countryside Jane had in mind when she later said, The beauties of nature must for me be one of the joys of heaven. There were also visits to relatives and family friends. In 1788, she and Cassandra visited their great uncle in Seven Oaks, Kent, where they met their cousin, Philadelphia Walters, remembered for her unflattering description of Jane. Not very pretty and very prim, unlike a girl of twelve. Okay, let's have a look at the pictures before we carry on. So, at the top here, this is a picture of Jane's brother Edward, who was adopted by the rich but childless Thomas Knight and his wife. As a wealthy landowner, Edward proved to be quite a man of business and was to support his mother and sisters in later life. Here is a, a silhouette of Cassandra Jane. 
It's dead. 
case, the estate could only be inherited by a male. Thus, Mrs. Bennet is anxious to marry off her daughters. A man lacking a fortune likewise looked for a suitable marriage, and a prospective wife was more attractive if her husband was to inherit her fortune. The themes in Jane Austen's novels were no different to the realities of her own life. Her youthful flirtation with Thomas Lefroy ended when it became known that neither had a fortune. Lefroy's relatives packed him off to Ireland, where after only one year he became engaged to a considerable fortune. He went on to become Lord Chief Justice of Ireland. step.